Welcome back! Today we're reacting to some more Kurzgesagt. They have a new one. It's a few days old now, but it's called The Reason Why Cancer is So Hard to Beat. Now, a lot of us know someone who has had the fight with cancer, who is going through the fight with cancer, and it is rough, okay? It's a tough, very tough thing. It's brutal. It's hard on you. It's hard on your family. And I think that if you know anyone like that, you should do everything you possibly could to go out of your way to be extra kind to the, those people and their loved ones and help in any way you can because this is something that no one should ever have to go through but unfortunately people do and today we're going to find out why it's so hard to beat so let's learn together and hop right in an undead city under siege soldiers and police ruthlessly shooting down waves of zombies that flood from infected streets trying I to love escape their and infect more cities. This is what happens when your body fights cancer. More exciting than any movie. How does this battle for survival unfold? It's true, it kind of is like zombies, isn't it? Because your cells are taken over. One, the elimination phase. It all begins with a single corrupted cell. It's no longer able to repair its genetic code, it can't kill itself anymore, and it's beginning to multiply rapidly. At this point, things are not great, not terrible. Yeah, we learned in one of the previous videos, it was like one of the last two we did, about how everyone gets cancer. Like, every five minutes or so, your body gets cancer, but your defense mechanisms take care of it. So it is, you know, taken care of, the cell either kills itself or your immune system takes care of it but it's always taken care of except for that one time when it's not which is when it really matters but generally speaking your body's pretty good at dealing with this this cell is not yet dangerous but if nothing happens it soon will be over a few weeks the corrupted cell keeps making copies of itself one cell turns into dozens hundreds thousands because the original was broken, its copies are breaking and mutating even more. Mm -hmm. They turn into different genetic lineages, clans that are working together and competing. Some mutate in a way that makes them weaker, others' mutations don't change anything, while a few become fitter and better at survival. And that's the thing about these mutations, is they're totally random. It's literally an experiment on evolution every time this happens, because we get to see the cells evolve through their mutations and the beneficial mutations stick around and the disbeneficial mutations go away. Together, they now form a tiny, tiny tumor. Not cancer yet, but getting there. The growing tumor needs a lot of resources. If the cells don't get food and oxygen, they'll die and the problem just solves itself. Hmm. Unfortunately, a few corrupted cells unlock a new mutation that saves them the ability to order the growth of new blood vessels. Oh, and so your body that's provides not good. the supply they need to survive. But as the tumor continues to grow, it starts causing damage. Yep. Neighboring healthy cells begin to starve and die, which attracts attention. Mm -hmm. In a sense, this tiny tumor is like a rogue town. Imagine a group of rebels in Brooklyn decide that they're no longer part of New York and start a new settlement called Tumor Town, which happens to occupy the same space. What a the great city analogy. Wants to grow, so it orders tons of steel beams, cement, and drywall. New buildings follow no logic, are badly planned, ugly, and <laughs> dangerously crooked. They're built right in the middle of streets, on top of playgrounds, and on existing infrastructure. Isn't that how LA is anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I could help it. I couldn't help it. I, LA is a beautiful place. I'm sure. I've never been. I'm sure it's beautiful. I'm sure the people are great. I'm sure everything's wonderful. Sorry. The old neighborhood is torn down or overbuilt to make room for new stuff. Many of the former residents are trapped in the middle of it and begin to starve. This goes on for a while until the smell of death finally attracts attention. Building mm -hmm. inspectors and police show up. In your body, attracted by the stench of dead cells, your immune system is activated. First responder immune cells invade the tumor. We learned a lot Microphages about that and previously. Killer cells, police forces that go right to work, killing and eating tumor cells. They release chemical signals that let the whole immune system know that there is cancer to be eradicated. 
Dendritic cells, the intelligence officers of your immune system, collect samples of dead tumor cells and begin activating your heavy weapons, helper hmm. and killer T cells. Yep. We explained these specialized super weapons in another video, but all you really Those were great to know videos. is that they have a library listing every bad thing Definitely that can come your body. Out. While each cancer is unique, there are genetic corruptions that they can't hide, and your T cells know what to look for. They are the deadliest cancer killers you have. By the time they arrive, the tumor has grown to hundreds of thousands of cells, but this is about to change. It's really big by that T point. T-cells block the growth of new blood vessels, which starves thousands of tumor cells and puts an end to their growth. Imagine mm. the building inspectors switching off electricity and water and putting up roadblocks to Cancer Town so no more food or materials can be delivered. Mm -hmm. With no way to hide from the carnage unfolding, the tumor collapses as hundreds of thousands of tumor cells are massacred. Their carcasses are cleaned up and consumed by macrophages that then order healthy tissue to regenerate. Your body okay. has crushed the illegal tumor town without mercy. You'll never know about this fight or how many times this has happened inside your body. Except, in this case, something didn't go as planned. Uh-oh. Two, the equilibrium phase. So that's basically where most events like this end, right? It happens a lot, it happens frequently, but your body just takes care of it. There's a war going on inside of you all the time that you're just not even aware of. It just takes care of itself. That's pretty cool. Unfortunately, natural selection spoils your victory. By doing its best to destroy the tumor, your immune system accidentally selects the fittest tumor cells. Remember, the tumor consists of different lineages that mm -hmm. keep growing and keep mutating. Most of these are eradicated but just a few are more resilient. One cell survives, it comes from the fittest tumor lineage and was just a bit better at surviving the massacre than anyone else. It decides huh. to do it all over again, but better this time. Yeah, this tumor lessons cell is learned. Much stronger than any of the thousands that were killed. Maybe it's better at hiding or fighting back. Maybe it grows faster or is better at stealing resources. Maybe it can survive with much less oxygen. And so it all begins again. Or all like of those the surviving things. rebels that started Tumor Town have learned their lessons. Now they know the law better and how to break it, what permits help them, and how to avoid the police. And so the surviving tumor cell These analogies are just on point. Mutate and form new lineages until once again a tumor has grown made up of more resilient cells. Mm -hmm. The immune system doesn't care though, and this time it even has experience. Instead of starting with police, SWAT teams go right in to tear Tumor Town down, killing its inhabitants without mercy. But once again, they don't get everyone. One of them survives, a fitter tumor cell from an already fitter lineage. This mm -hmm. time, it gets a cheap suit and studies the building code, pretending to be a lawyer to start Tumor Town all over again. <laughs> this struggle now repeats Blood a few sucking times. lawyers. Each time, the rebels learn a bit more about how to avoid the law. If at any point the immune system gets all of the tumor cells, the story ends. But mm -hmm. in this case, it doesn't. Finally, a tumor cell changes in a way that makes it properly dangerous cancer. The type that kills people. How? Immune cells have an off switch that deactivates them before they can attack, which in principle is a good idea. The immune system is extremely dangerous, and in many cases, it needs to be shut down, like around your central nervous system. Body has to keep it in check. can be exploited. The mutated tumor cell finds a way to switch the immune system off by targeting inhibitor receptors on anti-cancer cells. Oh. Inhibitor receptors stop immune cells from, well, killing. This cell is now the powerful founder of a new lineage of cancer cells and mass produces thousands of new copies that once again oh, change wow. and mutate further, building yet another tumor town. That's crazy. Three, the escape phase. The new cancer cells have become immune to the immune system and everything is different this time. Tumor Town has been rebuilt, even uglier and stranger than before, but now the Cancer City Council has forged all sorts of permits. As building inspectors come to shut down construction, they get confused. Stunned, they wander off, unable to order the destruction of the sprawling buildings. <laughs> oh, Please well, you know, to enter the I guess it is what it is, right? Like that building's going to topple over. But you know what? You have a permit here and it's signed by. Uh, definitely the mayor is the signature of what it says. So, you know what? Go ahead. Go for it. I mean, 
That's that's all the proof I need. You got the permits. Illegal <laughs> city to arrest the builders and execute inhabitants. But this time, Tumor Town has erected its own roadblocks that keep the law from entering. Confused officers stand around helplessly. As Tumor Town huh. slowly envelops the former Brooklyn and more and more civilians die, T cell SWAT teams arrive to end this travesty. But things get worse. New lineages of Tumor Town officials have started to forge court documents that order police to shoot at the SWAT teams. What the <laughs> cancer cells are doing at this wow. point is actively shutting down immune defenses by sending corrupt signals. The now malignant tumor is no longer a pushover and has begun creating the cancer microenvironment, a sort of borderland that's hard to cross. So is that kind of the difference between a tumor and cancer is cancer can actually activate or manipulate signals to the immune system in a way that is harmful, of course, because if it wasn't harmful, then we wouldn't be talking about it. Is that the difference? I've, I've actually never really stopped and thought about what the difference is between those two. Huh, that's really interesting. All avenues of attack have been shut down and uncontrollable growth is the consequence. This is a dangerous tumor. Oh, look at Cells that guy. Cells that are strong and able to fight push your immune system back and expand further. If more mutations happen, then some of the cancer cells will begin to explore the world and expand into other tissues to build new towns. And this is exactly what makes cancer so harmful. Mm -hmm. It's taking up space and stealing so many nutrients that your true self has no room to function anymore. Mm -hmm. If this goes on for too long, organs will shut down. But this tactic is a dead end. The more successful cancer gets, the more damage it does to its world. Yeah. When the body dies, the cancer dies too. It truly is a game without winners. Except humanity is planning to win this game. At yeah, this very moment, hundreds of thousands of scientists are working on new and better ways of killing cancer to destroy and burn down tumor towns for good. In recent years, immunotherapy has made enormous progress. It's mm -hmm. a relatively new therapy in which your own immune cells are modified to kill cancer better than any medicine can do. It's like giving your building inspectors machine guns and flamethrowers. <laughs> but this is a story for Sounds like time. a good idea. For now, cancer is a battleground. But if human ingenuity is to be trusted, then one day, maybe in the not too distant future, we mm -hmm. will eradicate it once and for all. And we talked about that in one of the previous videos, how cancer treatment in the futuristic form of actually having a cure for cancer, right? It's got to be individualized or we have to enable our body to fight it better. There's not like a, a medicine or something that we can take that's just going to stop all cancer, but we can give ourselves something that boosts the immune system and lets the immune system stop it more efficiently. And there might be, you know, three, four or five, a dozen, whatever different variants of this type of treatment. But at the end of the day, I truly do believe that cancer will become one day just something that is bothersome and not necessarily lethal. I think that we can get those mortality rates down close to zero over the next, say, century or so, maybe less, maybe the next couple decades. There's a lot of people that are much smarter than me that have dedicated their entire lives to this exact topic. And when you hear about some of the stuff on the horizon in this field and in others, it's very exciting. This is a, a wonderful time to be alive. This video was made possible in part by direct viewer support and in part through a grant by Gates Ventures. Nice. Well, anyway, this was a great video as always. Curse Gazad, grade A, I tell you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you have such a wonderful day.